we have always worked very closely for uh, several years now with the Green County Isaac Walton League Harry Enstrom chapter, and they started water monitoring. I think it was around like 2011, you know, 2011, 2012, to try to get some baseline data of the streams that didn't already have gas wells on them at that point. And we partnered with them in terms of, you know, them keeping us up to date about what are their, what are they seeing in the field? Is there any, you know, enforcement areas where we could help with that monitoring data? And so some of the, their hot spots were actually coming from a mine discharge. So there was the question of, A, how is frack water getting into mine discharges to begin with, which is a big hypothetical theory we could spend a lot of time going into, but the reality was there were problems. So what you may be seeing come out if you're just looking for fracking waste could be different than if you have these two waste streams interacting. You typically see a lot of um, barium with fracking wastewater, but if fracking wastewater comes in contact with mining wastewater, which has a lot of sulfate in it, those two, those two chemicals will combine and settle out. So we'll see a lot of bromides, and we'll not see as many, you know, we'll see a lot of chlorides, but we won't see the barium, so to say, which agencies like to use as like a, a character of fracking. I think that there a lot of the members in the Green County Isaac Walton League chapter are experiencing the impacts directly too. I mean, these gas wells are in their backyard. They're seeing the trucks randomly pull up a road. What's going on? Uh, and so there's a lot of investment in the community from folks there too, and they just want to do everything they can. And often in these towns, like Green County, it has been an extraction county for. A century or more that there's not you feel like as a community member there's not often a lot you can do to have an active role in like trying to protect the community from these impacts the the regulatory agency tries to keep it as like very limited as much as public participation and specifically around shale gas activity there's little to no public participation in the regulatory process and so by monitoring it's you physically being able to take an action and feel like you're you're helping, you're monitoring, you're a watchdog. That is a way to participate in actively protecting your community instead of like passively sitting by and just letting all of this stuff come into the into the town.